What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Basement Show. We got our boy Brent Lengel back again. But this time, Brent, we are not talking about Swaza. We are talking about a completely new project that you've been mentioning here and there on the show when you visited us. This is a like biopic, uh, historical fiction that you call mm -hmm. it, uh, about Buenaventura de Rudy. Now, yep. most of us do not know who that is. <laughs> I only found out about it thanks to you and that awesome preview comic that you sent me so I could prepare for this interview. So, yeah. Fred, welcome to the show, man. And tell us about this dude. What inspired you about what about his life inspired you to make this comic in the first place? Oh my god, well, like pretty much everything. So, the guy we're referring to is uh Buenaventura de Rudy. This is a biography of his by Abel Paz. Um, and he was uh, de Rudy started out uh, as a Spanish uh, kind of militant, he was uh, trained as a blacksmith. Um, his father was a railway worker, um, and he was born right before, right around the turn of the century. Um, and Spain at the time was a very, very brutal society. Um, when I say that, I mean the rich hunted peasants for sport on horseback. So like some like, most dangerous game type of shit. Yes, exactly. Huh. They could, you can look it up online. It's called reforma agregaria land reforms. Cause they would chase down a peasant, murder him, dump him in a hole. And Oh, now you get the patch of land. You always wanted you filthy peasant. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, so that's th fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> this is the world that Derudi is born into. <laughs> Um, and so he starts out sort of as a, uh, he's trained as a blacksmith and a metal worker. He joins the metal workers union and starts striking in solidarity with the Asturian miners. Um, but in 1917, the, uh, King of Spain, Alfonso the 13th, uh, ordered government troops to machine gun the Asturians to get them back to work. And, uh, then immediately after shooting a bunch of people and murdering them, uh, Derudi got his draft card in the mail from the King, uh, saying you have to join my army. Now the army that he just watched machine gun his comrades. So, right. He said, uh, you know, the king will have one less soldier and one more revolutionary um, deserted and was smuggled to France. Um, and so for a period, he was going back and forth between the border of uh, Spain, northern Spain and France, um, doing a lot of revolutionary um, uh, union activity. Um, and he gained this reputation as like a modern day Robin Hood. Um, and, I, and that was actually kind of the feel that I got from, it. like I said, I did not know who this guy was. And just from, you know, reading through the preview, I saw like he robbed a bank of like a million, uh, mm -hmm. whatever that I, I'm sorry. I don't remember this. <laughs> What's that? Yeah. It's Pesetas. A Pesetas. Pesetas. Okay. Yeah. The, uh, in history, by the and way, he gave it to the people. Yeah. Yeah, he did. He gave it to the people. Also, used it for weapons and uh, to buy uh, to buy schooling for for kids as well. So, Derudi, he's yeah, he starts off kind of as this Robin Hood figure. Um, there's a lot of like uh, th this is also a period when like they would have these things called yellow unions in Spain, where employers would force you to join their union, but it wasn't a real union, and like half the people in it were hired mercenaries. So you never knew if the person next to you was really a fellow worker or if they were an assassin pretending to be a worker. And if you talked about striking, they'd take you out back and shoot you in the head. Um, yeah. So, so they, uh, they had just like people behind the scenes, basically, just, you know, like uh, moles, if you yeah, would. Yeah, yeah. It's very mafia. Like That's sick like shit. Yeah. So there were a lot of like um, assassinations and counter assassinations. Um, Derudi's group, um, and you'll love this, his anarchist group, one of the, he had several, but one of his anarchist groups was actually named uh, Los uh, Justicarios. I probably mispronounced that, but that mm -hmm. translates literally to the Avengers. <laughs> I, I saw that in the book and I really did like draw on that. I was like, oh, that's great. And yeah. just, you know, the, the little punch of dialogue that you put in there, like, that's a terrible name. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I, I, I laughed at that one, like out loud. That was a good one. Oh, yeah. And I guess you, you could say, you know, because this did predate the Avengers comic that Derudi certainly. was literally the first Avenger. <laughs> that's, and certainly predated Captain America in World War II. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, exactly. This is it's interesting too. Um, so so basically he spends several years as a militant, 
And then um, he goes to uh, what winds up happening is is things get a little hot for him uh, in France. And so he goes to Cuba and he spends some time in Cuba um, trying to organize workers, gets very frustrated, uh, you know, kind of left with the idea that these Cubans are never going to revolt. Hmm. But um, he and I may end up dramatizing this. There was an incident where he was working uh, as a worker, agitating to get people to try to form a union uh, with a bunch of uh, sugar cane on a sugar cane plantation. And the bosses got wind of it and went and found who they like called everybody together and was like, we know that some, that you've been talking, that some of you have been talking about unionizing. We know exactly who you are. And then they dump three random guys. That they've just beaten the crap out of at their feet. And we're like, yeah, n- that's not happening. Get back to work. You know, next time we'll kill you. And so Darudi and his friends then proceeded to kill the, um, uh, the plantation owner and left a note with just like, uh, uh, the wanderers was the name they gave themselves that. So they left Cuba, uh, went to Mexico. Um, Darudi actually met a guy, uh, there in Mexico. And like the dude mentioned, he needed, um, like a, a thousand pesetas mm-hmm. to start a school. And the, a couple days later, like, um, Darudi, like he finds like a note in the, he finds like, the money that he needs with a note that says like, you know, uh, here, here's the money to start a school. They already robbed a uh, textile factory to get the <laughs> money. <laughs> uh, went to Argentina. The Argentinians were having none of it and instantly had him on their most wanted list. Uh, he was there for a little while, then um, headed back to France when he heard that this, the King of Spain, the same one that had machine gunned his uh, Asturian friends was touring France, tried to assassinate the, the King, but was caught and uh, that's when the in, in, that's when the comic kicks in. Uh, mm-hmm. It's with him in his French prison, just at the beginning of this story. And you can see already, like how crazy his life is. But it only like that's where I chose to start the story. <laughs> yeah, like I had no idea any of this happened. I, and you, you're telling this story, and I thought, that, oh, this is like we're being quite spoilery for the rest of the story. No, this is this is the prequel. Like I had no idea any of this shit happened. Yeah. So the prequel. Yeah. So like when we get into the actual story of his life, uh, it involves um, without getting too spoilery on on his on his feet. Yeah. He robbed not really a million pesetas. It says a million in the comic because they had originally blamed him for a million. He wrote he robbed over half a million. And then probably what happened was the bank manager stole the other half million and blamed it all on him. I mean, hey, that's a pretty decent idea. You, you can't yeah. knock the hustle. You can't. You know, I, I, I when I read that, I laughed out loud. <laughs> <laughs> so now the, these the thing that inspired him, it seems, was you know, aside from just growing up poor in the first place, and just seeing how you know, there, there's the point where he describes how his father worked his ass off, his mom cried because they couldn't afford bread when his sister was hungry, his grandfather was like paralyzed or just old from living in a wheelchair, like punching himself in the leg out of aggravation. So like he, he grew up around all of this poverty. And then, you know, you got these miners who obviously this was not any kind of safe condition to be, you know, going underground, least of all, you know, I mean, if you ever know the, the, the song, big bad John, it's kind of the same idea, like <laughs> not exactly the best spot to be working in. And these people probably just were, mm-hmm. you know, protesting or striking to, for better conditions. And like, nah, we'll go back to work or you're going to get killed one way or the other. Yeah. So like, I mean, that's it, fucked up. Yeah. Miners in particular, like if you look into labor history, like look into something like, for instance, the Battle of Blair Mountain with miners in the United States, where like the U.S. government and the Pinkertons literally dropped incendiaries from airplanes on striking miners. Like it, it there's a crazy history of militant labor uh, around, the, you know, the early 1900s. Um, and so like, yeah, the shit they don't teach you in school for sure. No, they definitely don't because <laughs> it makes capitalists very uncomfortable. Um, Listen, I'm all, I'm all for, you know, make your money, do your thing, but like, mm-hmm. don't be an asshole about it. It's very easy. To, I think it's very easy to make money and not be an asshole at the same time. I, I would agree with you on that. And, you know, I think DeRudy would probably agree as well. <laughs> so, yeah, anyway, like, um, so, D- yeah, DeRudy is talking about that. And by the way, that bit in the comic, uh, that is literally taken almost verbatim from a letter that he wrote to uh, his brother. Um, the part about uh, his family? Yeah. 
Yeah, mm. talking about the family. Um, there's uh, Darudi said some, a number of amazing things, but as this story progresses, uh, you know, uh, without giving away too much, um, Darudi does get out of prison. <laughs> Uh, he, he does get released and um, he winds up uh, as a major anarchist leader eventually. Um, and just because I'm going to do this, the I don't want to spoil this, but it's, mm -hmm. it's a big part of history. He winds up at the head of a force of somewhere in, in the comic, it's 10,000 anarchists in real life. It's probably somewhere between six and 10,000 anarchists. Um, but I, I like the 10,000 number, right, right. <laughs> uh, 10,000 anarchists number. marching on Madrid to try to save it from general Francisco Franco. So when, basically uh, they're just uh, like liberating pieces of France as uh, uh, Spain as they Spain. go along. Yep. Um, he he uh, is very well known, and this will be in the comic. And again, it's a spoiler, but if you Google him, you'll find like, right. he is one of the people who is most responsible for the defeat of the fascist military in Barcelona. So uh, the, in Spain, at the beginning of the Spanish Civil War, the fascists took over the, the, the south in the country. But the northern third, uh, they managed to defeat the military in the city of Barcelona and the anarchists. Uh, were the ones primarily responsible for that. They collectivized the entire city in the Argonne Front um, and then uh, proceeded to uh, do their best to to win the war for the Republic. Um, Let me ask you mm -hmm. about that word anarchist, because people hear that, especially you know in the in the modern world, people hear that word and I think they get the wrong idea, myself included. You know, yeah. I will not deny that. I hear anarchist and I'm thinking, you know, people with Molotov cocktails throwing you know, mm -hmm. flaming bottles through windows or some crazy shit, you know, like, and I, that doesn't seem to be what this dude is about. You know, he, he mm -hmm. seems to just kind of want his fair share from a very tyrannical ruling rich class of assholes. Yeah, like, I mean, pretty much I mean they call themselves anarchists, but I think like maybe the word itself gets a bad rap and people don't really understand what it means. And I guess I don't either. Yeah. Well, there, there's a process called, um, so th there's a process called recuperation where a radical idea that is dangerous to the status quo gets absorbed and spit back out by the society as a whole. Think uh, Che Guevara being his image being sold by urban outfitters on a t-shirt. Right. Um, and something similar has kind of happened with anarchism, the ideology um, and it's kind of come to mean in, in modern, it, 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 people think of usually like the Joker in the dark night. Uh, when they think about anarchism. Um, but, you know, anarchism, the symbol, A, uh, inside an O, mm -hmm. I mean, one of the first thinkers, Pierre-Joseph Proudhon, um, you know, who uh, was one of the more radical thinkers, like, during the French Revolution, um, he specifically argued that anarchy is the mother of order, and that the most orderly and peaceful society can only come about with the elimination of the state, which is to say the massive institutions that comprise the military and the police. Um, so anarchists tend to want to push for a radically egalitarian society uh, where um, people's freedom is maximized um, by essentially making sure that no one rises up to become a bully. Um, mm -hmm. And so there, there's a number of ways that they do that. But th that's sort of anarchism as an ideology that has been propagandized into either, you know, pu punk singers or, um, you know, uh, sort of random chaotic evil vill <laughs> or chaotic neutral villains who just want to cause chaos for the sake of chaos. That, that's pretty much what, like, the word almost defines is, like, you know, and completely anti-government, anti-everything, let it all burn and dance yeah. around the fire. I don't yeah, think which, that's, which is that doesn't seem to be that's not what they're talking about. No, definitely not. And that's not what Derudi was about either. I mean, he was struggling like Derudi before he died, um, one of his most famous quotes was that each of us carries a new world within our hearts. Uh, that world is growing uh by the minute. Mm -hmm. Um and so like Really, what Derudi is trying to do is very much in the in the same sense as I imagine the people that were trying to bring about, you know, uh, democracy when 
folks were uh, controlled by the monarchy and kings and dictators were doing, you know, trying to birth the new world to take the next step in human progress and human civilization. Um, and unfortunately that, you know, there's a lot of people that are very invested in the previous system and they don't want that to happen because they lose their privileges there's, and power. There's a lot of people that like, like to live in their little bubble and they mm -hmm. don't like when you try to pop that bubble, no matter <laughs> what it is, like whatever, you know, truth or information you're trying to drop on them. They don't, and they don't accept that. Then that's, that's not, it's unacceptable to them. And there, yeah. there was actually one point, uh, in the preview comic, and if it's mm -hmm. okay if I spoil this, because I yeah. really, I like this part a lot, where he's addressing the judge, uh, mm -hmm. like right before, you know, he, he's freed basically, and he's like, of course what I'm doing is illegal. Like, there's no way for what I'm doing to not be illegal, because it's upsetting the ruling class who's making the laws in the first place. And I'm paraphrasing, but that's like the yeah. gist of it. Like, yeah, of course it's illegal, and you know, you're your allusion to revolutionary America is the same idea. Like King George mm -hmm. definitely would have called Washington, Jefferson, all these other guys anarchists because they're yes. upsetting my rule. Like I'm in control of these colonies. What are these assholes doing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a really great point. And yeah. Um, and the, the quote that is also, by the way, another direct quote from Derudi. That sounded um, like it was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Revolution and law cannot cohabitate. That's, Revolution yes, is that's always really a good one. <laughs> He, I'll tell you what, the guy's really just, the old, if you look at like the old anarchists, Buenaventura de Rudy, Emma Goldman, Rudolf Rocker, uh, freaking um, Peter Kaprotkin, like you, you read their writing, it is some of the most beautiful stuff that you've ever encountered. And kind of, you asked me earlier, like, what inspired me to get so interested and invested in de Rudy's life and, you know, want to write about him. So like what really got me interested in writing about him was I had started to read a book called Homage to Catalonia because I had heard about the anarchists taking over the whole city of Barcelona and I wanted to learn about it. And I wanted to learn about it, not from anybody, but from someone I trusted. And I found out that George Orwell, who wrote 1984 mm -hmm. uh, and Animal Farms, he had actually gone to Barcelona to volunteer to fight uh, well, originally he wanted to write newspaper articles, but then as soon as he got there, he the world that Derudi had begun to build, he, uh, in his own words, immediately recognized it as a state of affairs worth fighting for. And so he immediately joined to fight fascism, you know, and wrote a firsthand account of it called Homage to Catalonia. And so I was reading Homage to Catalonia and I got really inspired. I wanted to write a play. So I started to write a play called um, uh, No Gods, No Kings, which I may revisit. Um, but I realized while I was writing it, I was like, um, ah, this isn't really working. I feel like I'm just sort of retelling Homage to Catalonia. And that's already a story. So why retell it? And in the book, I, I kept getting mentions that like – he didn't talk about Derudi a lot, but he talked about this group called the Friends of Derudi that kept putting out messages um, and, and communiques with like other revolutionary groups uh, fighting the fascists. And so I started, I was like, well, who's this Derudi guy? And I started to look into him and I started to read about his life and his, uh, you know, his, his uh, deeds and his actions. And I was just like, I can't believe I've never heard of this man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's he's literally one of the coolest people in human history. Well, in why opinion. would you have heard of him? This is not a, is again not something that they're going to teach you in school. <laughs> you know, this exactly. is some shit that you got to go about exactly how you did. You got you know follow that chain from an author that you like and respect to see what what else do they have to offer. Yep. So I, I followed that, and um, I eventually stumbled upon a number of books. Uh, AK Press, who've been very supportive. Uh, of the Kickstarter, um, they published this one, which is the English language uh, biography by Abel Paz. And if you want to see how much research I did, this is just one of the seven books I used for this. And Oof. like, you can't tell because I got the thing on. But yeah. like, <laughs> it's all, actually coloring the background in. Yeah, when when the background interrupts the pages, that's literally this is all stuff I've highlighted. <laughs> so like, here, let me give you just a page that's like, boom. <laughs> Wow, it's, it's, yeah, it's a lot of background on that page. Yeah. Yeah. So like, and by the way, this book uh, is actually also sort of a firsthand account. So Abel Paz is a historian, but he also was like 15 at the time mm -hmm. and fought with the anarchists and uh, was actually jailed by the Franco regime for a while and uh, was involved in some freedom fighting activity there. So 
um, you know, it, it's a very on the ground, real perspective. Um, and also, you know, he's a historian, so mm. it, it brings a lot to it. Um, so yeah, uh, I was just like, when I, when I finished reading about Rudy, I was like, okay, this isn't a play. There's too many set pieces. There's battles in Barcelona. There's battle, there, there's street fighting. Um, there's like horses and bombs. And all. I can't fit that on the stage. So I wrote a screenplay. Um, that I developed originally called Derudi shadow of the people. Um, and that did, I put it up on blacklist.com and it got some really good reviews. Um, but, and I've actually had a small film company uh, called Enon films recently optioned the rights to it. And they're going to try to get it made, but that's like a mid budget war epic, very much like Braveheart in Spain. Right. And you know, I mean, I could see this as like some band of brothers type miniseries shit. Like I think that would be awesome. As do I. And I, I, w I would love to do it like that. Um, so then, like, when I realized, uh, you know, when Snow White Zombie Apocalypse, um, which, oh, oh, and by the way, um, the newest issue is out. I finally have it. I, I'm going to be mailing it out very soon. I got your email that I believe uh, it, it's, I think it's on its way very, very it's, soon or something. It's not on an its update. way quite yet, but yeah, yeah, very soon. I, I will be mailing it out in the next few, it, it, like I'm locking people's addresses now mm -hmm. and getting stragglers and I'll be mailing it out. But once I realized, oh, I can make comics and people really <laughs> like them, I was like, okay, well, um, you know what? I don't need millions and millions of dollars and a studio to tell the Rudy story the way that I want to, to tell it. I just need an artist uh, and um, Kickstarter backers. And so, you know, uh, we created uh, the autonomous collective label, which is my uh, publishing label for Swaza and for other stuff that I've done over the years, uh, which by the way, Monty Python reference. Mm -hmm. I remember that discussion. Yes. Yeah. Um, and so like, uh, yeah, I found Jaime Infante, uh, who I, I'm so lucky I got him because he's such a rising star and he's going to be huge in a few years. I, I really got to tell you. And um, I reached out to him because he, he was recommended by an editor of mine and he's a native Spaniard and has an understanding of the country and the culture that I don't have. I don't even speak Spanish. Um, <laughs> and uh, he, he, uh, immediately was like yeah i know who derudi is this, you're doing a derudi comic i want this <laughs> and so That's yeah, awesome. he was 100 percent on board for it and he did some amazing work with it and has inked the first issue and we're going to continue to do it and uh the mini series will continue to be released on kickstarter uh and then hopefully that will be followed and that will be followed by a trade uh a, a final graphic novel that will contain at least the entire you know, two and a half hour movie that I've written. We're about, mm. by the way, at the end of issue one, you're about 13 pages into <laughs> the screenplay. <laughs> so how many issues do you think we're looking at? Do you have it planned or is it you're just going to like when it ends, it ends kind of thing? Yeah, I'm going to see how it comes out in the writing. I don't, th I think it'll probably be in the realm of like eight to 12 just okay. because of how far the story goes. But I may wind up taking more issues to really dig into the action because like things are going to get crazy uh, mm -hmm. as this series continues. Um, you know, there we've already had, um, you know, a daring escape from uh, a friend of mine, by the way, compared this is like, I feel like I'm reading a cowboy movie. <laughs> kind of, um, yeah. Not for nothing. Yeah. We've already had the daring escape from the law. Um, he, in, in issue two coming up, he's going to meet, another famous anarchist uh, who he knew in real life named Nestor Machno. Um, Nestor Machno is the guy who he, 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 he was the guy who commanded the black army, which was an army of a uh, hundred thousand anarchists, uh, mainly radicalized peasants uh, that fought for freedom uh, during the uh, Russian revolution uh, against both the whites and the reds at times. And uh, actually dealt the major final blow against the white army before they were going to take um, Petrograd uh, with a cavalry charge and a freaking saber. So this is a guy who, who like fought like Russians, like as a, as a Cossack, there's a great right. biography of him called Anarchy's Cossack, um, like on horseback with a saber and uh, freaking, uh, he also had uh, tachankas, which were, horse carts fitted with Gatling guns. He was like the very first like mobile. Um, <laughs> uh, I've, I've of, definitely yeah. seen those running around in a few cowboy movies before. 
Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Nestor Machno is the guy that invented that. That's that's um, cool. Yeah, so he uh, meets Derudi uh, uh, in the next one, um, and then Derudi is going to be heading back into Spain. Um, there's also a lot in this comic um, that. It, there's a sequence in the beginning, the first three pages, uh, and everyone is going to think that it, that's actually what this is from. Mm -hmm. Everyone's going to think that it's a flashback at the beginning. And by the way, I intended that, but it's actually a dream. And Darudi okay. has a series of dreams. I'm working in a lot with um, surrealism because that was big, like during the period uh, with like Picasso and Dali and everything. Um, uh, there's uh, some interesting spiritual themes that are, if you know what to look for, they're in there as well. Um, and yeah, this is, I'm basically I'm I'm painting Darudi's name across the sky because uh, he's genuinely one of the most interesting and, in my opinion, you know, admirable people in the world. He he lived in an incredibly brutal world, uh, you know, uh, and definitely was morally compromised by our standards, um, you know, but at the same time, you know, with, with the cards he was dealt in a way, he was about one of the best people you could be <laughs> mm -hmm. if you're in that situation. So like, yeah, um, I, that's one of the things that really inspired me about him. Uh, his writing uh, was fascinating. And I love the fact that he really, he was somebody that did not accept the world that he was given. He was someone that fought every moment to make the world a better place and to leave it better than he found it. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I think that that's really, really admirable and compelling. And it's one of the reasons why, you know, uh, you know, he died in 1936, um, you know, uh, which is, was nearly a hundred years ago, but, you know, it, I, I even almost a hundred years later, I can really still feel his spirit in a way, um, you know, through, through the work that has been left behind by historians and um, through the photographs, uh, which, of, of which there are many, uh, mm -hmm. which a number of which we have recreated. <laughs> um, That's awesome too. Like, I, I like the idea of, you know, taking that like an actual photograph and implementing it within the story of the book of the comic. Yeah. I mean, there was, um, after he died, a Spanish poet actually said that um, a uh, Derudi's nobility while living would one day cause a legion of Derudis to spring up behind him. And like, I'm just thinking of like, imagine a legion of Derudis. <laughs> That'd be incredible. That might be, you know, that might be a fun comic to do sometime. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just imagining that voiceover. Meanwhile, at the Legion of Derudis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be really cool. I, I really want to, I'm, I'm actually talking with, um, uh, Carl Moline, uh, who did uh, Frey and Rap 666 and did one of the uh, variant covers for uh, Swaza number four. Uh, and I think we are going to do like a uh, Buena Ventura de Rudy, the first Avenger. <laughs> I think that would that. be a cool idea. Like uh, yeah. either recreate the uh, like the, you know, DVD Blu-ray cover or like the, a comic book of sorts. Yeah, I'm thinking I'll probably do the comic book, but more, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm i going back and forth. I'm also wondering if Disney will be particularly litigious, even though, you know, it's obviously completely um, uh, within the realm of fair use. I, was, uh, I, I believe the, you know, when I was in college and we were learning about like copyright laws and shit, uh, if you change it more than 40%, it's officially yours. So oh, I think that that <laughs> would definitely qualify for you know, 40, 40%, especially maybe called the real first adventure, just a little fucking the, the real first adventure. Yeah. Very While funny. I'm causing trouble, but that's what I like to do. <laughs> All right. You hear everyone hear that? That is officially legal advice from Pete. Of Pete's <laughs> yeah. Basement. Change, change Disney 40% and it's yours. <laughs> Don't quote me. I mean, this is what Google is invented for. I just like to yeah. throw these ideas out there and whatever it sticks against the wall sticks. To, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, like this is um, there's going to be several more new series coming out from my uh, Kickstarters and uh, probably published through Scout or a couple of other publishers, um, you know, as uh, I continue to get uh, new series launched. This is the first one. And I, and I wanted it to be as far away from Swaza as, mm -hmm. as it could be. Uh, cause I didn't want to get pigeonholed as like, I love zombies. I love fantasy. And a lot of what I've written is fantasy. Um, but, uh, and comedy, and which this yeah. is clearly not. 
No, though there are some very funny moments <laughs> in it. Um, but yeah, yeah, this is a hi historical biopic war epic. Now, if you do like Swaza, you're going to like Daruti because it, it's my writing again. It, right. The only time it's not my writing is, you know, when it's literally I, I'm quoting Daruti word for word. <laughs> um, but like, uh, yeah, I mean, beyond this, I've got several other series that are ready to launch. I've um, joined. I, I think I mentioned this. Um, I'm working with Kit Bus. Uh, the original artist for Critical Role season one, which is about to be a TV series. They're going to be announcing that at New York Comic Con. Okay. She is doing the art for another series of mine called NPCs about the lives of non-player characters in role-playing games. Um, and then after that, I'm looking for an artist right now, and I have some idea of who I might go with, um, but I'm going to be launching a, a, another series, miniseries graphic novel called Berserker, uh, which is set in Iceland in the year 997. This, I believe you did mention. I, I remember the Berserker thing. Yes. Yeah. And so like all of these, like Swaza, Daruti, NPCs, like you would think that they would be very, very different and very separated from each other because the, the, the subject matter and the time period and even the genres change. Like Daruti and uh, Berserker are historical fiction. Uh, Snow White, Zo Snow White Zombie is fantasy, as is NPCs, though they're very different types of fantasy. And you know, Snow White Zombie leans harder on the horror. But actually, like each one of these stories, like carries a lot of similar themes, and there is almost a through line to a lot of what I talk about. Because when I write something, you know, it takes over my life for. Mm -hmm. You know, the Rudy, 10 years I've been working on this. That was going to be one of my questions. Like, this does not sound like something that started last year or over the, you know, I'm bored with COVID. Let's see what, you know, what, what's available yeah. to read. Well, I think I told you um, uh, on one of the last, um, so uh, on one of our, one of the times we've spoken, I, I mentioned that uh, people have accused me of being a method writer in that I'm someone that like, to tell a story, I believe you have to live it. As mm -hmm. much as, you, as as much as you can, as much as reasonably can be accomplished, um, you know. And for instance, to do the martial arts in Swaza, I had to become a black belt in <laughs> Kyokushin karate. Um, Daruti, like around the time that I first started writing about him and learning about him, was you know it was ten years ago. Um, like I was throwing myself into Occupy Wall Street and um, you know getting the, the crap kicked out of me by the NYPD and stuff because that was in a way the closest thing I could do to getting involved in a you know anarchist movement like the you know what we saw in Spain um, so like you know the, there it isn't simply that I am somebody that read about Daruti and um, wrote a story based upon stuff I heard from other people there's a lot of you know actual, personal experience that I've been able to bring to it because a lot of the time also like anarchist stuff is really hard to understand if you are like me, a red blooded American male, like raised in the society, you know, it's, it's tough to get your head wrapped around. So, uh, you know, it took me a lot of effort just to get to a point where I could really understand where some of these people were coming from and then not just understand it, but, tell it in such a way that it resonates with other people. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But I mean, like Swaza there, zombies have frequently been used as a metaphor for revolution. And that's not what I, that's not all that I'm using them for. But <laughs> there's, there's a definite thematic through line from Swaza to Daruti to NPCs uh, and, and to Berserker. Um, so do you actually like, if somebody calls you a method writer, it doesn't sound like something you take as an insult. Oh, definitely not. No, I didn't no. think so. Yeah, because yeah. by the way, I keep doing this because my face. Oh, I figured it out. Yeah, <laughs> um, it's just very by Paz's book. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so like, um, I don't. Yeah, I don't take offense to that. Actually, I think it's a, a pretty accurate uh, description. I know method actors sometimes can be seen as like total assholes because they'll sometimes mess with their cast members. But you know, also like Daniel Day Lewis is you know one of regarded as one of the best actors like ever so yeah yeah and he's a total method actor i mean he when he was doing last of the mohicans he showed up on uh, or not less the mohicans when he was doing the crucible he showed up on set and like built his house 
in like the old like uh you know um puritan like logs and shit yeah. i didn't even know yeah. that yeah yeah he, he he lived like in the woods hunting i think and gathering like when he was doing um last of the mohicans or right before it so yeah him and vigo mortensen also right um, right like they, they it, those are actors that really inspire me and uh so like you know, if I can take a little bit of that philosophy and apply it to writing, I'm, I'm definitely going to do that. Plus, it just makes me feel like my life is a bit more interesting. I mean, <laughs> honestly, it, crazy it, stuff. It, you know, you, you're acting these roles, so why not? Why not dive in and see what it's about? I mean, I just I can't help but think how much fun these guys would have playing D and D. And I don't even play D and D, but I just know like these are the guys you want to fucking play with. Oh yeah. <laughs> By the way, fun fun fact: I am actually playing as Buenaventura de Rudy in a D and D uh, in a historical D and D game that I'm uh, alongside uh, Nikola Tesla, um, Rasputin, and <laughs> Lord Byron. <laughs> and at the moment, we're like Doctor Who style, like time jumping, and we're in like revolutionary Paris at the storming of the Bastille. <laughs> It, so, it, this sounds like I don't know. This should have been Bill and Ted Four or something. That would have been a great Bill and Ted Four. In fact, let's get let's get Keanu Reeves. I bet you he'd go for it. I bet you he would. Honestly, I mean, you know, I can't say the other guys doing much, and Keanu might be busy, but I I bet you he goes for it. Truthfully, I'll see. But maybe maybe uh, my my profile will rise far enough with uh, Snow White Zombie and Daruti. I can, you, you know, the if I can help it, about, it will. Oh yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. The other fun thing, by the way, about Keanu Reeves is he loves martial arts. <laughs> I, I didn't know that. Yeah. He's he he after he did um the the Matrix. John Rick? Oh, okay. No, no, after he did the Matrix, he got really interested in martial arts and actually has been like a, a huge boon and friend to the martial arts community. He saved dojos from closing. Wow, he's, I had no yeah, idea. Yeah, he's that. That's been one of the major, like, important outlooks uh, or uh, important things that he's been doing. You know, beyond the the, the movies he's done. And that's really what cool. I, yeah, and I love it because you know, in a, in a way, uh, I guess he felt grateful uh, for what martial arts had done for him in mm -hmm. you know the Matrix. And I can't think of a better way to pay back that community. Yeah, that's really fantastic. I had no idea. Like, I knew, I knew he was like into it with you know the world of it because obviously I saw the training videos for John Wick and like just how much he threw himself into that. Not that I would call him a method actor by any stretch, but like you, you see when somebody's down with with what they're doing and like I'm I'm going to have fun with this. I'm going to give it my all at the you know at the very least to, to say the least of it. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, like I started out as an actor and one of the reasons I started out as an actor was I, uh, I wanted to experience all these different things that life had to offer uh, and rather than get stuck into a career path. And, uh, you know, that's, that's one of the benefits that acting really, really brings to it. Unfortunately, I hated memorizing lines. So, <laughs> <laughs> so instead I wrote them and when I can't remember my lines, I'm doing another draft. <laughs> well, as a creative, I guess it you know it, it allows you to kind of bounce around to different things and explore different avenues of that creativity. Mm -hmm. But now, yeah. Brent, let me ask you this: so now we we haven't seen a Kickstarter like this that I can remember. Uh, so, what kind of rewards are we looking at for this one, as opposed to like mm -hmm. obviously the. Uh, you know, Swaza rewards with there's a ton of varied covers, there's tarot cards, and there's all sorts of fun stuff and, you know, mm -hmm. like artwork and stuff running around. What are we offering for this one? So for this one, we've got uh, a lot of uh, interesting and specific rewards. We've got some uh, Daruti sticker sets, which have some really interesting stuff, including the injury to one is an injury to all image that I, I have behind me, which is a classic uh, IWW, the Industrial Workers of the World slogan. There's a autonomous collective pin. We have a number of prints that are available. Uh, there's four different prints and actually a fifth one that's going to be announced very, very soon. We have a, I'm about to announce this. So I'm going to, 
Pete's Basement exclusive. Love it. Um, we're going to be doing as a stretch goal a uh, six page um, additional Darudi story from beforehand. Uh, I haven't decided if I want to adapt the, um, sp- the 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 meeting in the cafe where he funds the school, or perhaps adapt uh, when he uh, battles the um, uh, the plantation owners in Cuba. <laughs> I, I, I would kind of lean toward that one. Yeah, that well, that one's quicker and easier to tell, um, to tell you the truth, and action packed. <laughs> yeah. Um, so like uh, we got an additional six pages of that and uh, I've got a handmade anarchist bandana. Um, <laughs> and by handmade, I mean handmade by me and my wife. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, that is uh, being uh, given out at the, starting at the $50 level. Okay. And um, yeah, that bandana, it, it is a replica of the same bandana that I wore at Occupy Wall Street, which you can wear and do perfectly legal things with. <laughs> <laughs> do we have varied covers on this? We do. We have three. Uh, one by Kit Bus. It's called um, uh, Dove Above. Uh, this one's really cool because um, she based it on a poem written about Derudi from an Argentine poet. And uh, when he saw his his uh, mug shot, um, you know, in Argentina when they were searching him and uh, the poem is, uh, I see his face in the mug shot uh, from uh, the side with a number, his turbulent hair disheveled. The only thing missing is a dove above, raging and delicate. Um, that poem inspired her cover. We have another cover, which is, um, inspired by two things, uh, a famous picture of Derudi when he was off of his hunger strike and on trial in France. So it's him, Ascaso, and in the comic, it's his other friend, Oliver. These are all real people. Um, in real life, it was Hover, which was another anarchist friend of his, but that famous photograph of them is transliterated with the trial of, or the court martial of yellow jacket, uh, the famous, uh, Avengers cup. Yeah. Okay. I know exactly which one you're talking about. You're standing in the middle. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you've got, you, there's a double reference there. So one of the most famous der- photos of Derudi ever with his trial and also, you know, this classic Avengers feel to it. Uh, and then the final one uh, that we have is Adam. Uh, uh, that one was Jaime Infante did that. Um, and then the final one we have is by Adam Bryce Thomas, uh, who's done covers from me before. He's the guy who did IDW Sonic, uh, the Hedgehog and Samurai Jack. And he did one uh, where he basically reimagined uh, he, where he reimagined the Derudi column which was Derudi's uh, anarchist uh, militia, like as a, as an anime. And <laughs> I got to tell you, I love that cover so much because I just look at it and I'm like, I need to see this ensemble anime <laughs> <laughs> kind of like an attack, like give it sort of like an attack on Titan kind of intro and like put it in uh, yeah, Spain during the Spanish civil war. Like if, if anybody knows how to make that happen, contact me because <laughs> yeah, I, I really want to see this ensemble anime. It needs to be super Japanese too. Uh, and you'll see it when you see that. So yeah, that's there. There's also um, a uh, print and poster by J. Andrew World, who is an illustrator. He's done a lot of work for Zero Books uh, and for Give Them an Argument with Ben Burgess. His print, one, is super cool. It's Derudi with his giant blacksmith hammer and uh, you know, kind of in a weird yin yang with uh, General Francisco Franco, um, and also like uh, Jan- he's just in general an awesome guy. Does does phenomenal work. So I want to make sure to plug him in this, and uh, that's like the the largest of the um, stuff. There's also, and this is really cool. So when I first created Autonomous Collective, it was my theater company in New Sorry. York. And in like 2011, I printed exactly 75 um, uh, autonomous collective theater from below um, like uh, posters with a big fist coming up and a uh, anarchist a symbol with, um, uh, you know, gear uh, imagery uh, in it. And I have exactly 44 left and that's it. 
Um, and so those are available. Um, at, there's a level you can give to get it. And there's also 10 that are available as an add on. Okay. And those are like, probably some of the rarest of the rare posters that I have ever given out. Once those are gone, they are gone. <laughs> um, That's dope. Yeah. Yeah. So th those are the benefits. There's also, um, if people want cameos within the series, they can get those. Cool. Uh, either as a background character um, or, um, you know, at a higher level, um, you're, you're able to get some lines. It's a little harder to do the cameos in this than in Swaza. Right. Because if you buy a cameo in Swaza, I can just make it up and right, right. put you in and do whatever I want. But, like, I, this is a real history and I'm following, like, an actual thing. So, like, a friend of mine was uh, – there's a character named Koltsov who is a reporter slash KGB agent. Um, and, uh, my friend was like, what do I get to do to be the, the bait, the facial basis of Koltsov? And I'm like, well, you give me a thousand dollars and then I tell you no, <laughs> because Koltsov was a real guy and I'm going to use his real face. Thank right. You. <laughs> But uh, yeah, we've already had uh, somebody take advantage of that. And they're going to be uh, one of the uh, Republicans defending Barcelona, for instance, from the fascists. So there's that. And then at the highest level, like if you want to take a writer's class with me, I have four slots for this. Um like a six month right by bi biweekly writing class with me where I take I, I don't just teach you how to write like mm -hmm. but I take you like through the process of creating, a, a producing, and like getting picked up or crowdfunded your own comic. Like basically there people get to benefit from my hard won industry experience. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, those are the levels. Um, and uh, I'm really excited about it. There's uh, probably going to be some more coming out. I'm, I'm wanting to do a Daruti kind of challenge coin because I really love making those for Swaza. Um, I just have to figure out, ex I, I think I need it to be a gear and I need to find a place that will let me make I a challenge coin like with that. a gear and make it not, insanely expensive to produce <laughs> right right that sounds cool that that's something i would like because I, I happen to like challenge coins too i've uh i've recently seen a few kickstarters that included something like that and uh it immediately caught my interest so i've mm -hmm. i've kicked in on it at the very least that level so oh, yeah did you ever get any of the uh, any of the swaza challenge coins yep uh that was that happened <laughs> to be one of them that's uh that was my third one as a matter of fact and oh, you know what's funny is uh, the the way you packed it? I almost missed it because it was like it was so secured to the box that I opened the box and I'm just looking into it to like put out pull out my comics and all stuff. And then I look and it's literally like on the side of the box, like, "Hey, Pete, don't miss this." And I'm like, "Well, I'm glad I didn't fucking miss it." <laughs> yeah, there was. Uh, I, I uh, I'm I'm going to I, I'm going to have to start like writing that in because some people did miss it. Nobody threw it out, luckily. Mm -hmm. But like one person was like, "Where's my coin?" Oh wait, it's right here in the box. <laughs> with, with literally, it said, "Hey, Pete, don't miss this." <laughs> And I, okay. I I missed it the first time I opened the box. I did. <laughs> Fortunately, I kept everything in the box. Otherwise, honestly, that might have gotten emailed. To, that might have gotten mailed to somebody who bought some shit from me on eBay, and they would have got like, "Oh, here's a cool freebie." Like, oops. Yeah. So well, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, and we've got the the Prince coin coming out. I I've, I've got a third uh, bronze coin that I'm going to be releasing soon with Swaza, which I'm really excited awesome for about. issue five. Yep. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, as always, man, you can count on the support of the basement for that. And definitely for this, I, I've always said I love historical uh, works, historical fiction, and I find that I learn more reading it this way. It's it's more uh, appetizing, I guess, for me is palatable. Actually, that's that's more the word I, I should use. Uh, and yeah, I, like, I, I had no idea who this guy was. And I read through the first issue. I'm thoroughly into this. Like, I want to learn more. <laughs> oh, just wait, because it, it's only going to get get more nuts. Oh, and um, Pete, actually, I can show you. This is another uh, Pete's Basement exclusive. So I have f special Pete's Basement announcement. For the very first time, the completed um, second set of Snow White Zombie tarot cards, uh, which are oh, still available cool. through the backer kit. Yeah, we have the devil card, which features the big bad wolf, the big bad alpha That's wolf, sick. and his enslaved uh, uh, wolf zombie hybrids. 
we have the hermit which is harold von berg uh from the uh reign of the blood covered king mini series this is mm -hmm. the bean wizard who does bean magic and will be in uh we have the moon um this is a uh something of a spoiler actually but this is the Hansel and Gretel witch who had who was stuck Ooh. in the oven during Swa the events of Swaza number three and four, uh, who will become uh, apparent very soon. So, wait a minute, she's still in the oven? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> they find out about that in issue. Four. Holy shit! I was gonna say like I don't I don't know this one. It's like she's still in the fucking oven. <laughs> Holy yep. shit! Yeah, we have, and she'll become a new antagonist. Um, we have. Jack the Giant Killer as the magician um, with the, the bean vines growing up around him. Weird, weird stuff is going to be happening with Jack very soon. He's going to be making an appearance in Swaza in issue five. Um, we have this character. Uh, with the, the card is the wheel. And uh, what I will say about her, this is Jack's sister, Jill, who has not yet been introduced to the character. And this is based on my uh, friend, uh, actress, uh, Mirari Sithol, who mm -hmm. she played Rapunzel in the very first revival of Snow White Zombie Apocalypse and is also in a couple episodes of Black Mirror um, oh, cool. and Master of None. So she's the, the basis for Jill. Um, you'll see how Jill plays into the story as well. Jack, is he like... Is he like a hammerhead or is he going to turn out to be like a real hero? Because I know he, you know, he lied about the whole seven in one blow thing. So mm -hmm. like yeah. when I heard that and I instantly like you say he, he was like the magician, but that that pose kind of reminded me like a, a funny kung fu stance, if you will. Like it mm -hmm. looks like he's like almost oh, like, like a head mantis kind of thing. And well, f mm -hmm. if, if you ever see the movie Kung Pao. I have seen Kung Pao. Like, he, we trained him wrong on purpose. And like that, I don't know. That's just what like came to my, my face to your fist. <laughs> um, Jack is really interesting. Um, that what we'll find out about him in issue five um, is that Jack uh, will be a real hero. Uh, okay. And what he wants more than anything is to be a real hero. He is also a habitual liar. Um, mm. And uh, that will play into a lot that will have to do with his character. Um, and then, of course, we have the final one, and this is the the one of the big ones for the death card. <laughs> so this yeah. is death featuring our first or second look really at Nyx, the black fairy who caused the entire zombie apocalypse. Oh, yeah. Um, we still don't know how that happened, really. Yep. We'll find out about that uh, starting issue four. Um, and she's going to be coming into the story soon. Um, but uh, the, she's actually based upon um, my friend, uh, a brilliant violinist named uh, Johanna Di Moresco. Uh, she's the violinist for the Crew Shadows. And she also has like her own fashion and makeup line. Uh, so she was kind enough to let us uh, use her image for um, uh, Nyx. You can also find her on Instagram as well. She's got a great Instagram. Cool. Um, yeah, so that is the new tarot set that I'll, I'll, I'm making for for uh, Snow White Zombie Apocalypse, which is available. Um, and uh, I'm hoping to one day do a, a full, um, you know, at least get the whole Major Arcana, if not an entire Snow White Zombie themed uh, tarot deck. Um, and, you know, you'll see similar stuff like this with Daruti, where I just come up with crazy shit to give to people. Mm. <laughs> Cause sure. like. For people like me who don't actually know, uh, how many cards are in a tarot deck? Oh Lord, I think like seventy-two. <laughs> oh wow, okay, yeah, there's a lot of them. I see. Uh, I didn't. I thought it was going to be like twelve or something like that, and I was going to say, hey, you know, if you if you get delusions of grandeur, maybe you want to make a whole deck of playing cards, thinking fifty-two was a lot. <laughs> yeah. Oops. We Not may so much. we may do a whole deck of regular playing cards. I wanted the the the. Um, the the tarot cards because I, they just felt more fantasy to me certainly um, but yeah there are so a lot I mean, of astrology people and and uh you know people who read cards who are going to take offense to that line and uh just let everybody know like chill out he didn't mean it that way <laughs> i mean they i i, I mean they're more like magical <laughs> because Swaza is full of magic. Thank you. Precisely. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm really excited with how this, uh, this set is coming off though. Um, yeah. So we are moving forward. There will be a new artist starting issue five 
on Snow White Zombie Apocalypse, who has not yet been announced, but I'm really excited about the work that they're doing. Um, and uh, yeah, moving forward with Jaime and Kit uh, and, uh, you know, Autonomous Collective is going places. So please be along for the ride. And yeah, and, uh, yeah so the, the Daruti Kickstarter runs another nine days, I think eight days at this point. We're already almost 200% funded. We've passed 10,000, which is really exciting. I'm anticipating uh, some really interesting things to happen tomorrow. Uh, I won't say anything else about that, but okay. some very cool people have gotten behind the Kickstarter. Um, and uh, yeah, you just follow me, www.brentonlengel.com. You can follow me on Twitter at Brenton Lengel and uh, follow me on Kickstarter, both the Brenton Lengel account, which is going to be publishing the Swaza issues and the Autonomous Collective account, which is going to be publishing Daruti and probably several other uh, titles of mine uh, in between Swaza issues. Fantastic, man. I love that you're used to this. Like you already know the questions and so just throw out all the ends. I don't even, I'm, I'm just going to sit back and relax at this point. That's fantastic. <laughs> Dude, I kid, but it's always great having you on and I love your work and I'm always happy to support it in any and every way I can. I'm definitely kicking in on this and I encourage everybody out there in Peach Basement Land to do it as well. Learn some shit, you know? This is, this is the heart of what comics are for. Like, it's not just fun and games. You can learn stuff, and that's <laughs> awesome. Com this, this is a really great way to learn shit that you're not going to hear about in school and experience other th things that happen, really fucked up shit that happen, and, you know, get a yeah, kind of well, maybe change your perspective a bit. Absolutely. And it's not just, by the way, I should also add that it, what's really fascinating about the, you know, Drudy's story is that it, it, it's simultaneously in like one of the darkest periods in human history at one of the, in one of the worst situations you can be in some of the most inspiring and uh, amazing uh, triumphs of the human spirit over, um, you know, evil. Yeah. I think for lack of a better word. Uh, and a lot of that can be found in learning about this, you know, suppressed history of the Spanish anarchists. Um, be, yeah. So yeah. Thank you very much, Pete. This is Always, really awesome. Man. And uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing, uh, to seeing the episode. <laughs> Definitely, man. You guys know how to hit us up. Questions at PeachBasement.com, Facebook.com forward slash PeachBasement, Instagram, Twitter, et cetera, at PeachBasement. Hit us up. Let us know what you're reading. Let us know what you're kicking in on. And let us know if you're kicking in on Shadow of the People. And if you're not, I'm, I'm going to yell at you. Like, this is something <laughs> that you should be reading about. This is history. This really happened. So learn you some shit. Brent, as always, man, thank you, brother. And I'll talk to you Absolutely. soon. Great show. <laughs> yeah. Peach Basement is copyrighted 2021. Ripped Productions. All rights reserved, so go fuck yourself. Um, yeah, and I mean, like, Daruti, my camera's decided to, just, it's decided to focus on my background and not my <laughs> And hey, thank you, Daruti. You fixed the. <laughs> the hey, there it is. So uh, I have, for the first time, to reveal on camera the completed and printed snow. Uh, God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> damn. <laughs> Let me turn this off. Hang on. Okay. <laughs>